This will be all the gears that I'm bringing on my 2021 CDT through hike, as well as all of the professional camera gear that I'll be bringing to film a full length documentary. You can find out more about this project and the gear that I'll be carrying on mindbodysoulfilm.com. And this is going to be my third official through hike. Um, I guess fourth kind of long distance backpacking trip and I've had a lot of time and experience to kind of dial in the gear by now uh, so I'm going to go over all the gear that I'm going to be carrying on the CDT this year. So altogether my gear is totaling up to about 26 and a half pounds and that's my base weight um, which is heavy. <laughs> it's way heavier than I want but half of that weight is camera gear. I'm carrying about 13 pounds worth of camera gear so um, this is not a video for the average through hiking gear. <laughs> um, if you want to watch this whole gear breakdown and just subtract all the camera gear then you'll have a pretty light base weight of around 13 pounds. So for this hike I'm going to be using the Hyperlite 3400 Southwest pack. Uh, this is a 55 liter backpack and this is the first through hike that I'll be carrying this thing on. Um, on my through hikes before I was using a bigger kind of traditional style backpack and that thing weighed I think over three pounds and it was like 75 liters so it was pretty big. Um, so I'm definitely stepping it down with this one. It's coming in at just over two pounds and um, with it being a much smaller pack it's going to kind of force me to pack a little bit lighter and a little bit less bulky. Um, but I have had some use on this. I was using this pretty much all summer last year, so I really like it so far. I'll probably be using a couple different kinds of shoes, but I'm going to be starting off with these Ultras. These are the Lone Peaks, and I've already had two pairs of these. Um, I really like these shoes. They don't take any breaking in. Uh, they're comfortable right away. Uh, they're really lightweight, and um, the thing that the, these Ultras are kind of known for is having a really wide toe box, so it kind of allows your toes to spread out and breathe. The only thing that I don't like about these shoes is that they don't seem to last very long. Um, my last pair, I think, I think I only got 300, maybe 350 miles out of them. They were wet for most of those miles, so it was pretty rough on them, but um, they do seem to fall apart kind of quickly. I always carry two pairs of socks with me. Uh, these are darn toughs pretty much a standard I think for every through hiker and um, I've never used gaiters on a through hike before but I'm gonna bring them on this one I got these in the springtime last year and I used them most of the summer um, these ones are kinda cheap REI brand and they have a <laughs> like a bungee that goes around your shoe which does not hold up especially when you're going through rocks and stuff so I might try and make my own string that goes around the bottom of the shoe or just leave it at that. Um, they, they clip on the front and then they velcro on the back if your shoes have like a gator trap. And these are pretty helpful just for keeping debris and stuff out of your shoes. And then um, this is a very simple med kit that I made for my backpack. I pretty much always keep it way down on the bottom. Um, it's just some gauze, some band-aids, and medical tape. Um, there's some Neosporin in here too. Alcohol pads too. And something that always comes in handy on a through hike are just um, gallon size Ziploc bags. These have a million uses so I always try and keep a few of these down on the bottom of my backpack. Uh, and two trekking poles. So I've tested out a few different uh, brands of trekking poles and different qualities in the past year. Um, I went with a cheap like $40 pair and those fell apart almost immediately so I have discovered that it is worth it. Um, these trekking poles are pretty expensive but if you're going to be putting them through some kind of harsh conditions it's, it is worth it to spend the money. Um, right now I have the snow baskets on them for split boarding but I'll be taking these off and putting smaller baskets on. And um, the one thing that I like about these poles, they call it the uh, Z pole. So they break down like this. Um, instead of having like a telescoping kind of collapsing mechanism, uh, they break down into three sections like this. And I've found this type of trekking pole to be 
a lot sturdier because you can really put a lot of weight on it and they don't slide or kind of buckle or anything. And then on this pole I have a GoPro mount so I'll get into that in a bit when I get into the camera gear um, but this allows me to attach the GoPro onto the trekking pole and then kind of hold it out as a selfie stick. And inside my backpack I always keep a trash compactor bag. Um, it's basically just a garbage bag but it's a lot thicker and tougher so it holds up to tears a little bit easier. So I keep my sleeping bag in the trash compactor bag as a way to waterproof it. This is an Aegis Max sleeping bag. It's kind of an obscure Chinese company. <laughs> These things are kind of hard to find. Um, and I've done a whole review on this sleeping bag because it's kind of a special uh, sleeping bag. It's about half the cost of any other kind of bag in its class, but I think it's pretty good quality and I've been happy with it. Um, I used this for about half the Hayduke Trail and then all summer last year. It's a 20 degree bag and it weighs about two pounds and it's held up pretty well. Uh, one thing I have noticed with this sleeping bag is that the down on the inside tends to migrate. Uh, it seems like they didn't fully close off the baffles, um, so over time the down has kind of migrated and it's been collecting at the toe and near the head, which is kind of annoying, but I've been working on trying to like move the down back into the middle of the sleeping bag, and that seems to be working. And for a sleeping pad, I use this uh, Thermarest Trail Scout. And it's a small pad, it's kind of like a three quarters length. Because um, when it's not that cold out, you don't really need a sleeping pad that's going to cover your whole body, so it basically ends where my knees do. And um, it's a little bit insulated, it has some padding in here, and then you blow it up too. And I use this for the entire Hayduke Trail and all summer last year, and this thing has gotten a lot of miles on it. It's had a couple holes here and there, but um, with the included uh, Thermarest glue dots that you can use to patch the holes. It's held up pretty well. And we'll be bringing a new tent on the trail this year since I'm hiking with my girlfriend Amy and two dogs. Um, we're, gonna need a, we're gonna need something a little bit bigger so we got a three-person tent. And this is a big Agnes Tiger Wall UL3. And one advantage to hiking with a partner is that we get to split up gear. So I'm gonna be carrying just the inside part of the tent and Amy's gonna be carrying the rain fly and I have the poles with me too. So far we've just had a couple nights in this tent uh, out in the backcountry in winter time and it's, I really like it so far for the amount of space that you get inside the tent. It's very lightweight, very easy to set up. Um, it's a partially freestanding tent which is a kind of interesting design. It's something that I haven't seen before but it basically, um, it's freestanding and it'll spread out the head of the tent and basically the middle of the toe end of the tent and then you have to stake out the two corners of the toe end. Um, but it's kind of nice to have a mostly freestanding tent just so you don't have to rely on stakes in what can be unpredictable ground to hold the thing up because there's been a lot of times when the ground is too rocky or too hard to really effectively stake down a tent and that can be kind of frustrating. All right, then on to clothes. I, I try to go pretty minimal with the clothes. Um, so I usually bring one pair of shorts, one pair of long pants, uh, one long sleeve t-shirt, and one short sleeve t-shirt, and that's pretty much it. So here's the shorts that I'll be wearing. Uh, these are brand new. I just got these from REI. And one thing that I'm looking for when I get shorts is that they have this kind of inner mesh layer. So that allows me to go commando, basically, and then I don't have to wear underwear. And um, I, I, I prefer that on through hikes. It just kind of simplifies things. And then there's one less thing that you have to carry. <laughs> and then for in town, basically, I'm pretty much only bringing boxers for wearing in town. And I'll wear those with my long sleeve pants. And these pants are made by Nepalo. It's a company that I don't know much about, but I really like these pants. They're um, very simple and pretty lightweight. Um, and then I have a 
kind of a stretchy belt on here too because I know that I'm definitely going to be losing some weight and these pants are probably going to be falling off me at some point. Uh, just a regular old beanie. This is um, actually my friend makes these. He has a company called Ancient and he does cool drawings and stuff. And a short sleeve t-shirt, just a regular old Under Armour t-shirt. Um, I usually don't wear these too much on trail. This is kind of an in-town thing. I like this style of long sleeve shirt because the sleeves can be rolled up. Um, and then you can kind of strap them at the elbow here. So it's basically a short, it's a short sleeve and long sleeve. And uh, this kind of uh, this one's made by Columbia, but you can get pretty much any brand. They're all basically the same, um, and it's really good, lightweight material that dries very quickly. And another thing that I have not brought on another through hike is gloves. I think I'll be bringing these this time. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but I'm starting to appreciate having warmer hands and wearing gloves. Um, and uh, it's not too much extra to carry. So just a pair of thin gloves. And then this is my towel. It's kind of a multi-purpose thing. This is one of those towels that you can get wet and then you like snap it like this and it gets really cold. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's kind of a cool technology. So I can use this to stay cool when it's really hot out. Um, just drape it over my neck. I can also kind of fold it up and wear part of it inside my hat and then um, I can have like a shade over my neck and my back and that kind of helps stay cool um, and then you can actually use it like a towel too and pretty much the only thing that I'm bringing for rain gear uh, is this this really lightweight shell this is made by Outdoor Research and it's super lightweight. Um, I think it comes in at just around six ounces. This is another newer piece of gear. Um, I used this all last summer and I've been really impressed by how durable it is actually. It, it feels really flimsy and like it would rip super easily but um, I've done a little bit of bushwhacking in this and it's held up pretty well. One thing I forgot to mention is an essential part of any through hiker kit is the down jacket. Um, there's a lot of options out there you can get and this is the second down jacket that I've had and the first one that I got was a uh, Salomon and I think I paid like 200 bucks for it it was really nice but kind of expensive um, it lasted a long time but it, it just got old so when I wanted to get a new one I thought I'd try something different and I found this for 40 bucks on Amazon and it's made by a company called Wanto I think it's a Chinese brand. I knew I was taking a risk on it and I thought it would probably just fall apart immediately. So I've been using this for a whole season now and it's actually held up great. Uh, if anything it's even lighter than my old $200 Salomon jacket and I've been pretty impressed with it. So sometimes it is worth it to buy the cheap stuff. And also my hat. This is kind of my, my signature I guess. <laughs> it's these, Mark. Um, camo boonie hats. I've had a few of them and um, they go through a lot. This is the one that I carried on the Hey Duke Trail so it's pretty sun bleached. Um, and then this summer I have been collecting mountain goat fur and bison fur. And Amy just weaved the fur together and then she sewed it onto the hat so it's kind of a, I don't know, cool personal touch onto this hat. And it's getting kind of old and falling apart. You can see like that's the color that it used to be and now it's all very faded. But I'm going to wear it until it completely falls apart. So we'll see if it makes it through the hike. <laughs> and then this is going to be my food bag. It's a 20 liter dry sack. And I'll be using the cat food dish as my stove. If you if you follow through hiking at all, you probably know how these work. Uh, but if you're new to this, uh, this is just, it's literally just a tin of cat food that you buy. And do whatever you want with the cat food. But you, you need the tin. And you take a hole punch and punch some holes around the edge. And then you can take um, denatured alcohol and put it in here and light that on fire. 
and that's your stove. And what I like about using these compared to like a fuel canister or something like that is that the fuel is usually a lot easier to find um, because you can buy what's called heat, H-E-E-T, which is made for putting in your car to keep your gas line from freezing in the cold. Um, but really all that stuff is is denatured alcohol, so you can burn that for fuel. Alright, and for my pot, I have this MSR uh, Titan Titanium. Super lightweight. Um, it's a little over half a liter, I believe. Uh, so it's not that big, but for your own personal meals, it's just fine. And a spoon, just a regular plastic spoon. And onto some more little stuff. For my water filtration system, I'll be using the Sawyer Squeeze Filter. This is kind of a newer model that came out, the Sawyer Mini. Even smaller than the original ones, and um, it has a pretty good flow, I've noticed too. And usually a good idea to carry this um, back flushing plunger, especially in the desert of New Mexico we're going to be filtering some really nasty water and that's going to clog up the filter really quickly so it's good to have this to be able to back flush it and clean out the filter and um, these platypus water bags this is a two liter and then I have two one liters so that gives me four liters of capacity and then I'm going to be carrying another liter at least in water bottles this is going to be my wallet I actually found this on the PNT. It was like um, dangling from a branch. It definitely got like snagged out of somebody's pocket. <laughs> this is about 60 feet of cord uh, for bear hangs and whatever else that you might need cord for. Headlamp. Um, I've had a hard time finding a good headlamp that I really like and I've gone through a lot of them and I've broken a lot of headlamps too. <laughs> Um, I've even bought I've even bought some of the more expensive ones and been really disappointed. So this is called the Black Diamond Revolt, and when I bought this headlamp, I was kind of looking for a couple things. Um, my main priority was to have something that was rechargeable, which are it's kind of hard to find actually. It's kind of surprising that there's not more options out there on the market, and also something that's just kind of rugged and waterproof and going to last a while. So this this fit the description. And I've had it for six months now, something like that. Um, used it all spring, all summer, and um, it's gotten a lot of use. And I really like it so far. Um, it's got a whole bunch of different modes on it, which are kind of more complicated than I need. But um, it's been reliable, so that's that's been the, the biggest thing so far. <laughs> oh, and it has uh, three AAA batteries in here that are rechargeable, so you can recharge them through USB power, which is really nice. For GPS tracking, um, Amy and I will both be carrying one of these DeLorme in-reach devices. Right now the DeLorme company got bought out by Garmin, so if you're going to get one of these new, you'll be buying something from Garmin. Uh, but I've had this for six years and had no issues. This thing is basically bulletproof um, and it's been through a lot. But what these allow you to do, a um, couple different things. Uh, the most important, I guess, is that it's an SOS button, so if you ever get yourself into some real trouble, you can push the SOS button and that'll alert search and rescue, and they'll come and find you. Um, it's also a communicator, so you can text back and forth. Um, it's kind of cool that you can send text messages over a GPS signal to anybody's phone, and so you can just type in a regular phone number and send a text message. It also allows you to uh, be tracked online. So when I have this running, there will be a website that anybody can go to and they can see where I'm at within like half an hour um, and that'll update live, so that's kind of fun. It's rechargeable through USB and when you're tracking all day for the whole day, it'll usually last about three days, maybe three and a half days before you have to recharge it. And a compass and some sunscreen definitely worth it to find these little bottles of sunscreen. <laughs> they can be hard to find sometimes. And then on to the exciting part. Or the heavy part, I guess. 
So I did a bunch of backpacking with this camera last summer, um, a couple hundred mile trips, so I've been able to kind of test it out and feel the weight of this camera. Um, it's definitely heavy, it weighs over three pounds, the setup. This is a Rode Video Micro Mic. The mic itself is pretty small actually, but it has this huge wind muff and this, this makes a big difference. Uh, when you're filming stuff outside, it's really important to have this uh, big wind muff on there. I've gotten really good results with this thing. And on those backpacking trips, I was using the Peak Design camera clip, which is that clip that kind of straps on your backpack strap, and then you can just clip your camera right into it. And it works, but for a camera this heavy, um, it definitely starts to strain that side of your body over time. Um, so I found myself kind of switching the clip from one side to the other um, on longer trips, trying to kind of balance out that stress. <laughs> so I'm going to be using a different system on this hike. Um, I just developed this. It hasn't really been tested out yet, so we'll see if, if this is going to work or not. But this is a dry sack made by a company called Overboard. And, and they make, they kind of specialize in like, um, kayaking and boating and stuff like that. Um, so it's a really rugged, kind of heavy duty dry sack. Uh, but in order to fit my camera with the microphone on, I had to cut out a section. So I cut that out and that allows me to just slip the camera in there with the microphone on. That way I don't have to worry about taking stuff off. And then um, this whole bag is going to clip to my shoulder straps on my backpack using these carabiners and I can kind of flip this over. So this is just going to live on my chest all summer pretty much and I call it the fetus. So it's kind of a big bulky system but I think it's going to reduce the amount of strain that kind of goes unevenly on one shoulder or the other. And it does create one more step when you take off your backpack you got to unclip but it's not that big a deal. And when I had the, when I was using the camera clip, I would always have to unclip the camera when I take my backpack off anyway, and then I'd end up putting the camera down in the dirt. So this should offer a little bit more protection for my camera too, from dust and even a little bit of rain. And speaking of rain, this is my rain cover. There's a lot of really fancy, um, rain cover systems out there for cameras and I've experimented with a couple of them and most of the time they just end up like getting in the way and being really bulky and my hands are wet anyway so the camera gets wet so I found that simpler is better especially when it comes to rain covers and so if I have to use this I'll probably be taking the microphone off and then this just slips into here And then that cinches down over the lens hood. And it's kind of nice, there's some room back here so you can keep your hands in here and it kind of keeps your hands dry and you can still operate the camera that way. On the camera lens I'll be using a ND filter. And this is a variable ND filter. So what that, what that does is that it allows you to uh, spin the filter to get a lighter or darker image and I won't get too into the specifics of filmmaking practices here, but um, long story short, you get a much more professional image when you use a um, ND filter to darken your image instead of shortening the uh, shutter speed and aperture and stuff like that. <laughs> Our dogs are conditioning for the hike behind me right now. <laughs> <laughs> now go somewhere else. <laughs> So this is a 360 camera. This is my first time using one of these. Um, I've been testing it out for about a month now and it's been a lot of fun. I, you can use this like a regular GoPro with just one lens, um, but it has two lenses on it. They're basically 180 degree images and then they get stitched together inside the camera so that you can see a full 360 degrees in every direction. And it's just been a lot of fun to play with and uh, edit footage with this. 
And I think mostly what I'm going to be using this for is for time lapses. I'm imagining being up on a peak and setting this up there and getting like a full 360 degree view time lapse from up there. And I'm sure we'll find a whole bunch of other creative uses for something like this. Um, this is called the GoPro Max. It's kind of their second generation 360 camera. The 360 GoPro also came with this handle which extends out so you can kind of hold it out like this. And then it also turns into a tripod. So it's kind of a handy like all-in-one sort of thing. And then camera number three. This one flies. So this is a DJI Mavic Air. Um, they're already on to the Mavic Air 2, but that one's actually bigger and heavier. Um, so I have the first Mavic Air. Um, and as far as video quality and drone capabilities packed into a tiny little package, this thing is pretty impressive. Um, you can get extremely good results with this little drone. There are some things that are kind of frustrating about this drone, but I won't get into the full details about it here. Um, I actually have another review that you can see uh, where I kind of go into the where I kind of go into depth about this drone. But overall, it's there's really nothing smaller and lighter that you can get for the for the kind of image quality that comes out of a flying camera like this. It's pretty amazing. So I'll be carrying this drone along with four batteries. Um, I keep one battery in the drone and then three batteries in the controller in this pouch. And this is definitely my kind of heaviest, most optional item, so if I do end up having to cut weight, I'll probably have to leave the drone behind. Um, and there are a bunch of wilderness areas and national parks and stuff that we'll be going through where you're not allowed to fly a drone anyway. So maybe I'll be sending the drone ahead to the next town for those sections. Um, but this is a controller. One thing I like about the Mavic Air controller is that the joysticks come off and they tuck away in here. So that when you're not using the controller you can take the joysticks off and then you don't have some awkward little things sticking out and it makes the whole controller much more packable and easier to um, carry around. And tripod. This is the same tripod that I carried on the Hey Duke Trail, only I have a different ball head on top now. I've been doing a bunch of research lately to look for lighter tripods, but I really can't find anything out there. Um, these tripod legs are carbon fiber and they're made by a company called Sconefield. And the legs weigh in at about a pound and a half, I believe. Um, and I really can't find anything lighter than that, like not even close. At least that's a full-size tripod because uh, it's a four-section leg and they extend pretty far. So you still get a um, full-size tripod out of this and then these, the neck can go up even farther. I'm about 5'8", to give you some perspective. And it's a very solid, very sturdy tripod, very well built. Um, it's been through a lot already and it's held up just fine. And then to try and save a little bit of weight, I got a different ball head. The ball head that I used to have on here weighed over a pound. And then I just got this new ball head that only weighs a few ounces. And I've been pretty impressed with this little thing. It's made by Ulanzi. And um, it's basically about as minimalist and simple of a ball head as you could possibly make. And it still has very solid metal construction and feels very sturdy. So that makes my whole tripod weigh about two pounds. And then onto the accessories. Um, so I've got three dry sacks. This one only contains the charging block for the drone. So it kind of sucks if you're going to bring a drone, you got to carry this big, heavy charging block. And there's really no way around it unless I wanted to mail this ahead to every town. Um, so that's just the way it's got to be. And I'm just going to bury this way down in the bottom of my backpack and just forget about it until I get to town, basically. And it'll just be a brick that I have to carry around. And then this red bag is my kind of dedicated camera gear bag. I have 
three of these octopus cables. So one end is USB, and then the other end is USB-C, USB micro, and lightning. Um, you can get these octopus cables in basically any configuration you could possibly need, but these are the three ports that I use. So that's what I got. And I'm carrying three for a couple of reasons. Um, because sometimes I'm going to be using more than one at a time and just to have backups I've found that these are not that reliable and they have failed on me a couple times and when one of these fails it can be kind of a big deal if you're relying on charging stuff um, but these seem to be built pretty well um, and they're like a braided cable so they feel pretty um, rugged and durable and a whole bunch of microfiber cloths and then this is my filter case uh, this is just a metal tin that one of my filters came in and that's what I use to hold my filters now. So I have a clear UV filter just for protection really and circular polarizer. And then I have the variable ND filter that's basically going to live on the camera. I'm going to be carrying five batteries for the Sony a7 III. For charging batteries, I have this cheap, uh, just generic Enagen 2-bank battery charger. Uh, one thing that's nice about this is that you can charge it through USB, and it has two slots for doing so. So you got USB-C and USB micro, which is just kind of nice because I always am using different cords. Um, and you can charge batteries inside this camera just by plugging it into a USB battery bank, which is nice, but... Um, I'm pretty much using the camera all day so I don't want to have stuff plugged into it so if I'm charging batteries during the day I usually have these charging just in my backpack. And then um, I'll probably be shooting interviews while I'm out there too so I have a special lavalier microphone that I'll be bringing for those. Um, this is something that I neglected to carry on my other hiking videos and the audio quality pretty much always suffered in at least a couple of the interviews. There's terrible wind or background noise or something like that so having a lavalier mic that you can clip onto somebody's lapel like this and then it directly feeds into the camera is a much more reliable and kind of professional audio source. And then just the regular Apple headphones I'll be carrying too both for music and um, monitoring audio. Well, I'm shooting interviews too. Charging cable for my watch because this is the one thing that doesn't have a kind of universal charger and the watch that I'm going to be bringing is called a Sunto 9. This is a kind of new purchase for me too so um, we'll be using this to monitor different health statistics which will be part of the movie as we'll be kind of studying physical changes in our body over the course of the hike too. So this watch can measure heart rate and it's a GPS watch and it can track our elevation gained and calories burned and all that kind of stuff. And then just a regular um, wall outlet for a USB charger for when we're in town. And oh, I should also mention that the uh, drone battery charger has two USB ports on it too, so that'll give me three USB ports when we're in town that I can charge stuff off of. Um, just a Velcro strap that I'm going to be using for the 360 GoPro, um, so I can strap the GoPro onto the tripod or whatever else really um, for getting shots or uh, time lapses and stuff. It's a SD card case made by Rugard. Um, it's a very durable, rugged thing. It's waterproof, and I can store 12 SD cards in here. And I just told it, totaled it up. I'm going to be carrying like 900 gigabytes worth of storage just in SD card space. So that should be plenty for the longer sections. And then, um, then I'll be offloading everything in town. I'll, I guess I'll make a separate video for that. I have a whole system that I just came up with for offloading footage in town. I'm going to be shipping my laptop in a bounce box um, and that way I'll be, it'll be much easier to manage footage that way. And then this last bag is kind of a mixture of camp accessories and whatever I couldn't fit in my camera accessories bag.
So a notebook with a pen, toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet paper, lighter, chapstick, backup lighter. Um, I like to wrap duct tape around a lighter or just something really so I have some duct tape because you never know when you might need that. Bag of ibuprofen, uh, nail clippers, this is a patch kit for my sleeping pad and a little pocket knife. And then we're down to camera accessories again. Um, this is a big 20,000 milliamp battery bank um, so I'll be charging my camera batteries off of this and phone, watch, pretty much everything. And then this is a new system here that I have devised for backing up footage in the field. Um, if you've seen my past videos on gear and camera gear that I carried on the, th on the Hey Duke trail, I was using a NAR box to back up footage, which is basically this little box with a built-in hard drive, and you can plug in SD cards into there and import your footage. You can also plug external drives into it and import footage from your cards onto your external drive. You control the whole thing with your phone and you're supposed to be able to edit pictures and videos on your phone. Um, it's all a very good idea, but that thing just turned out to be a huge disappointment and it was super glitchy and um, just very, very difficult to use, at least with my high quality 4K footage and big picture files and stuff. So I, I don't trust that thing anymore. Um, there is another version out and I think it's better, but um, it's also like 600 bucks. So. This year I'm going to try something a little bit different. Figured out a way to um, be able to plug a hard drive and an SD card into my phone and then transfer footage from the SD card onto the hard drive using nothing but my phone. So I have an iPhone, so this is a lightning to USB adapter. It's very hard to find a lightning to USB-C adapter, so I ended up getting another adapter, which is USB-A. USB-C and then this dongle it's made for like MacBooks and stuff like that it has a USB-C end and then it has USB ports and SD card slots and it can also be powered externally from a battery which is crucial if you're going to try and run um, an external hard drive off of this so I have to plug the battery bank into the dongle and then I can plug my external hard drive also into the dongle. And then I plug in the SD card into the end here. And then everything plugs into my phone. And then just using the um, file system on the iPhone, you can transfer files from the SD card onto the hard drive. Um, it's, it works, it's just very slow. So um, got to have some patience there. <laughs> but it does seem to work. Um, this is something that I will go into more detail in another video too. For the external hard drive, um, this is kind of the standard for any sort of pro photographers out in the field. They use these uh, lacy, rugged hard drives. They're kind of made for being jostled around and um, all kinds of weather conditions and stuff like that. So these are very rugged and reliable. And this is a two terabyte drive. I think that's it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so my base weight is about 26 and a half pounds and all of this camera gear is about half of that base weight. Uh, you need to be very dedicated if you're going to be carrying all this kinds of camera gear, but hopefully this should give us really professional looking results and I'm really excited with the types of footage that we'll be able to get out on the trail. And don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and follow us on social media to stay up to date with this project.